Good afternoon. My name is Chris Tasarski. I'm the Shadow Minister for Municipal Affairs for the Alberta Party. And this afternoon, I want to address something that is uh, very fresh in all of our minds, and that is the crisis that's occurring in uh, the southern United States, specifically in Texas. As many of you may know, I lived in Texas with my family for five years. We have dear friends there, dear friends who right now are facing some real hard prospects, uh, lack of power, lack of water. We have family down there as well. And I want to address this in light of my role here uh, with the Alberta Party in taking on this uh, shadow Minister of Municipal Affairs. There's some headlines coming out about how is this going to impact Alberta? What's happening in Alberta? Are we next? Are our communities next? This is absolute lies and nonsense coming out from the media and it's being fed with a narrative that doesn't make any sense at all. The fact that Texas is freezing and without water and like I said, dear friends and family who are hurting right now and in some real problems due to the lack of infrastructure that's occurring right now have absolutely nothing to do with Keystone XL decisions, Pierre Trudeau, Joe, or sorry, Justin Trudeau, Joe Biden, nothing to do with that. And to start equating things like that is just misleading the people of Alberta and misleading the voting public to try and present a narrative that is absolutely false. Alberta is not suffering from lack of infrastructure. Why? Because for many, many years, we have built up a robust natural gas infrastructure that allows to heat our homes and now provides more and more electricity from natural gas sources instead of using coal. And therein lies the issue. We've combined that with a robust uh, and growing wind infrastructure, especially in Southern Alberta, where we experience a lot of windy days, the people of Medicine Hat and Lethbridge can sure tell you that, and in the Crow's Nest Pass, we don't have any reason to worry. And I wanna assure Albertans today by telling you the truth, we don't have reason to worry about our power grid and infrastructure here in the province of Alberta. But the people in Texas do, and they have reason to worry. Why? It's because Basically, infrastructure now has become a partisan issue. And so the investigations will now happen, and we will find that instead of utilizing the natural gas infrastructure was there because of high spiking nat gas spot prices, they tried to rely on other sources. Wind is not to blame here. Solar is not to blame here. Natural gas is not to blame here. This is mismanagement of infrastructure. And the United States is an amazing country. And like I say, we have dear friends and family there. But infrastructure is crumbling. And it's ironic. When President Trump came out and started talking about infrastructure, that was something I sure could agree with him on. And it's something that most Democrats can agree on. And here in Canada, whether you're left or right, what we can agree on is infrastructure needs to be fixed. It needs to be modernized and it needs to evolve. These issues of severe weather in the southern United States occurred while I lived down there. Okay, this was not the first year that this happened. I recall very vividly in 2014 driving a, a group of people who'd come down to see our technology in Texas on an eight hour drive to the Dallas airport, finding out all the flights had been canceled on a typical drive that took us two because the highways were basically a skating rink, not something many people in Texas are used to seeing. So to argue that somehow, as a result of Joe Biden's actions or, P or Justin Trudeau's actions and cancellation of pipelines is to blame is absolutely false. And I want the people of Alberta to hear the truth. We have robust infrastructure. The United States has robust infrastructure, but it needs to change and it needs to evolve and it needs to be modernized and it needs to be weatherized. Our climate is changing and it's about time we realize that. And to pin the blame on some situations that have nothing to do with it, who here heats their house and runs their power grid off of bitumen from the oil sands? There isn't anybody. And that's a well-known fact. Something that's circulating around quite frequently now on social media is this Calgary in crisis documentary. Calgary is not in crisis. Calgary is an amazing world-class city, but it's at a crossroads. It's at a crossroads, not a crisis. And we need to decide what we want to do for our future. 
And you know what? The good folks in Texas and the Southern United States are also at a crossroads. Jaguar Land Rover, GM, Ford, need I go on? Are already announcing what their plans are. Volvo has ceased to make diesel trucks. One of the largest truck makers in the world is not making their trucks with diesel anymore. If we began to expand even into natural gas vehicles and utilizing natural gas and continuing to drill for more natural gas, which burns cleaner, burns more efficiently, and causes less emissions, and combine that with robust renewable infrastructure, people in Texas right now would be warm and toasty in their homes. And you know what, folks? That's the truth. So today I wanted to come before you and let you know the facts. I am a 30 plus year veteran of the oil and gas industry and I am proud of that. I am proud of the innovations that have been brought to the industry and I will continue to press for a transitional energy structure to help our municipalities here in Alberta, but also to help other municipalities and regions around the world. We need to show that this industry can be part of a transitional change. Municipalities can change, regions can change. And like I said, if we really focus seriously on what's to come, the good folks in Texas won't have to go through another freezing winter again. And nor will we ever here in the province of Alberta. I hope you have a great day. <laughs> Stay warm out there. It's warming up a little bit here in Alberta, isn't it? But isn't it quite amazing that we managed to get through very, very well utilizing our robust renewables and natural gas infrastructure. And yes, still some coal, we need to really think about that. But we managed to make it through some pretty brutal temperatures over the last little while, didn't we? So we have to thank all parts of our energy infrastructure who are working to keep us powered and heated and safe. We need to take pride in what we've done here in Alberta, but also realize that we have to look forward to a future. And if we do it properly, we'll never have to be worried about being without power and water and heat in any of Alberta's great municipalities across this province. Thanks. Have a great afternoon.